what I did here was to measure one hand a half and rule the straight line. This will be for my buttonhole and my sewing allowance. I also went ahead to rule on horizontal length where all my measurements would take place. After that, I measured my top length, which was 28, but I added 2 inches for the sewing allowance. From my shoulder, I measured 10 inches, which will serve as my chest line. The next thing I did was to measure my shoulder, half of my shoulder measurement, which is 9 inches. I'm going to mark it. Basically, you are going to start measuring from that 1.5 inches. That is where all your measurements will take place. Just after I finished filming this video, I realized you guys can't really see the chalk on the clothes. I should have used the pattern paper, but I don't have one. So let's continue. From the shoulder, I'm going to go down by 1 inch. Then I'm going to measure my neck measurements, which is 3 inches from that 1.5 inch line. After that, I'm going to go a straight line from that 3 inches to the dropped 1 inch line. To get your ammo measurements, all you have to do is to divide your bust by 6, then add 1.5 inch. The next thing I did was to get half of my ham hole, then I'll go in by half an inch. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to measure cut out of my bust measurements. Remember that all your measurements will take place on that 1.5 inch line. For my chest line, I'll go down by 6 inches. This will serve as my waistline. I just realized I did not film this part. Basically, what I did here was that from my chest, from my chest measurement, I went down by 6 inches, which is my waistline. To get the M measurements, I just marked the same measurement on my chest line, which is my boss. I marked the same on the hem measurements. Then I connected my lines. Because I want the hem of my shirt to be curved, what I did was get half of the hem line, half of it, I marked it. Then on that side, I went up by 4 inches. I'm going to mark it too. I'll be connecting them with a slight curve. Back to my neckline. My neck depth will be 3 inches. Then I'm going to connect it. It was quite difficult working with this silk. I don't like it at all. Once I'm done with all the measurements, I'll be adding half an inch to my shoulder measurements. I went ahead to cut out my fabric, so this is what it looks like. The next thing I'm going to do is to cut out my facing. I'll be cutting it on this interface because it's more stable than the silk. So what I did here is just basically fold it into four. I'm folding it into four because I'm cutting, I'm sewing two shirts. I'm, using, I'm sewing two shirts, so that is why I need four pieces. I'll be placing my shirt on it so I can cut out the neckline and my shoulder. What I'm going to do is just draw a slant line from the shoulder to like the waistline, then draw a straight line down to the hemline. I'll be cutting it out once I'm done with that. What I did next was to pin it down on my fabric, then I went out to cut it. Once I was done cutting, I went ahead to gum the interface on my fabric. So this is how it looks like once I was done. To cut out my back shirt, I'll be using this chevron material for it. The first thing I did was to fold my fabric. Then I placed my front shirt on my folded fabric. You realize that the 1.5 inch allowance for the button on the front shirt is on the folded on the folded back like i'm trying to eliminate the button allowance because the back doesn't have a button so because i wanted the back to be a bit longer than the front i went down by one inch then i'm going to connect it to the front by a slant curve i'll be cutting out my fabric after that for the back neckline i went down by one and a half one and a half inch then i'm going to connect it to the front
So guys, this is how the back looks like once I was done cutting it. Before I started sewing, I went ahead to give that edge of the shirt a slight curve right there. On the neckline, I'll be notching it by 2.5 inches because that is where I want the bias to reach. What I'm going to do is just take my bias and sew it around from that notch part but it should be a little bit above the notch part. This is what it looks like once I was done sewing. So we'll be introducing our facing next. I'm just going to sew my facing from the notch part, exactly from that notch part. I'm going to sew it straight down. Before I went to my sewing machine, I realized that the shoulder for the facing will give me issue because I don't want to use facing again for the back piece. So I went ahead to just cut out that shoulder part. I'll also interlock that edge before going to the sewing machine. This is what it should look like once you are done with it. I'll be joining my front and back shoulder together. The next thing I did was to measure my round neck from that notched 2.5 inches to the other notched 2.5 inches. You have to be careful to get the accurate measurement for the collar. We will be cutting our collar next. Whatever your round measurement is, you have to divide it by two. Then you mark it on your interface. I've already folded my interface into two. So I'm just going to mark the half measurement on it. For the height of the collar, I wanted mine to be 3 inches, so I went ahead to mark it. Because the half of my collar is 8.5 inches, I'll also get the half of 8.5 inches, then I'll mark it. On the edge of my collar, I'll go up by 3 quarter of an inch, then I will connect it to that half measurement. On the upper part, I'm just going to give it a slight curve because it's not pointed, our collar is not pointed. I'll be cutting out my collar. I realized I don't really like the shape of that curved part, so I, I went ahead to reshape it. I have pressed my interface on my fabric. You notice that on that upper part, the curved part, there is no sewing allowance. I did not leave any sewing allowance, but on that on the down parts, I left a half an inch sewing allowance. I'll be sewing my bias on that curved part with no sewing allowance. The next thing I did was that I placed another fabric under the collar then I'll be sewing it together. You have to sew very close to the sewing allowance of the first one. The next thing I did was to cut out the SS fabric. So this is what it should look like once you turn it out. The sewing allowance on the interface, what I did was that I pressed it inside. While the one that does not have stay, I'll be sewing it on my shirt. Before that, on my shirt, I'm going to notch that 2.5 inches that I sew to like that point where my bias reach. I'm going to notch it, then I'm going to turn it out. Please remember that your bias should also exceed that 2.5 inches. I'll be getting the midpoint of my collar, then I'll notch it. My collar will start from that notch part, then I'm going to pin it down to the other side. After that, I'll go to my sewing machine to stitch it. Once I'm done sewing that, then I'm going to pin that upper collar on my shirt. I'm going to sew that one too. So guys, this is how it should look like once you are done with it. 
The next thing I'll be cutting is my sleeve. I'll be drawing an horizontal line where all my measurements will take place. Then I'll measure the length of my sleeve. Since I'll be adding a curve to my sleeve, my curve length is 3. So I'll remove 3 inches from my sleeve. Close half an inch sewing allowance to the curve and half an inch sewing allowance to the shoulder. Now my sleeve length is 25. 25 minus 3, that's 22. 22 plus 1 inch, that's 23. From that horizontal line, I'll go down by 3 inches. Then I'll mark it. After that, I'm going to draw a curve from that edge to the 3 inches point. From my wrist, I measure half of my wrist measurements. Then I marked it. Then I connected it to that 3 inches. After that, I went to cut out my sleeve. What I did next was to get half of my folded wrist, then I'm going to mark it. After that, I'll be cutting it, I'll cut it up for like maybe 3 inches, should be enough. I'll be pinning my sleeve to my sleeve opening. What you're going to do is that that notch part, like the notch part of on the sleeve, make sure it's at the back of the shirt for both sides. I've cut out my curve. My curve length is 10 inches. To get that design, all I did was that I folded my curve and I just cut it by that side. I'll be cutting out the upper part of my curve. Just like I did for my curl, I'm going to sew that head with my bias tape. After sewing it, I also stitch it down. I will take another fabric and place it on it, making sure right side are facing each other. Then I'll sew the side of the interface. For my sleeve, I've also stitched down that opening, that notch part, the 3 inches notch part. The next thing I did was that I stitched my sleeve together my bodies, both the front and back, I stitched them. This is how my curve looks like after sewing. Don't forget to leave half an inch sewing allowance on that edge. When sewing your curve to your sleeve, you're going to place your curve inside your sleeve. Like your sleeve will be on the right side. But your curve will be inside your sleeve before sewing. So most times when sewing curve, your sleeve and your curve, they are not the same measurement. What you do is, on your curve, you measure 2 inches. You mark it. Then you are going to sew from that edge to the 2 inches point. After that, you are going to turn it and start from the other edge. So when you get to the 2 inches point that you stopped in the first place, if there is any excess fabric, you are going to pleat it on that two inches edge but in this one i do not have any excess fabric so there will be no plating just like we did for our collar once you are done with this you are going to fold that interface part on it and you're going to stitch on the sleeve so guys this is how it looks like once i'm done for the trousers, i have a video where i made the front band it shows out with a front band and a back elastic the only difference with this is that i added bias tape by the side and on by the hem so go and watch that video if you want to make a trouser i also made two different shirts apart from the first one so this is how they look like thank you for watching please don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel bye